Hollywood is a demon. Hollywood is a demon and whenever they take a good story, they will most likely swallow and eat the heart of that story. Every time, and even when they have something good going on, they most likely eventually just mess it up. For instance, if you take Game of Thrones season 8, uh, the reason why season 8 was uh, shitty, of course, you know, the craft and all of that, but behind the scenes, Hollywood, Hollywood, Hollywood is behind the scenes. The reason why it was shitty is because D&D, the two guys who were helming everything, they wanted to move on to a Star Wars project because they wanted to cash in on that because they were now famous. And it was greed that killed season eight of Game of Thrones. It is greed that ruins everything in Hollywood. And now they will pick up one of my favorite fantasy books, Name of the Wind. Um, there is a deal with Lionsgate for my, for my main stuff, uh, the King Killer books. I reread this particular book every now and then. Of course, there is one major reason why I reread it. It's because of the bros, it's because of the language. Patrick Rothfuss is just a master. I'm sorry if you are another fantasy author and you're hoping to compete with Patrick Rothfuss. I doubt there is much hope for you. <laughs> yes, this guy is a masterful bros writer. Like he knows how to use the English language such that it just your head is just spinning. But you see, Hollywood has these tendencies where greed takes over and ruins the heart of the story. However, for the first time in my life, I do not think it will be that that ruins uh, Name of the Wind. I do not think it will be uh, actually Hollywood who will be ruining the Name of the Wind. What will ruin the Name of the Wind and the movie adaptation of the Name of the Wind is actually a problem that is endemic to books because a lot of the time books take their time. You know this, books take their time and movies don't have time. That's the difference between books and movies. With a book, for instance, first time I read through The Name of the Wind, I took, it took me three weeks. Of course, I was reading another book alongside that one, but it still took me three weeks, okay? And that means I'm perfectly fine spending an afternoon with Kavoth and, you know, technically just spending a time, you know, in the world and being immersed. Six hours, five hours, that's like three movies. In few chapters of reading The Name of the Wind, I've already spent more time in the world, in the book, than the movie will be. And I'll explain why it's a problem, because The Name of the Wind takes its time. There are few fantasy books out there, much like The Name of the Wind, who just don't give a damn, and they take their time to establish the world, to build the magic, to build the characters, to build the struggles, to build the conflict. Like, Battle Crawfers will have no issue making Kavoth go on a tangential story if it means it builds the world and it builds the overall atmosphere. This is something I like to call narrative inefficiency. Narrative inefficiency is basically when the story, the point of the story is slow to reach. So for instance, the point of this particular trilogy is coming back to Kavoth and having Kavoth wake up from his uh, sort of, you know, depressive state, uh, basically get back to action. And that is going to be a problem for the movie to solve. Why? Because the, if the movie will have to tell the story of Kavoth and the Chronicler and Bast and all of these adventures, well, guess what? It has to be narratively efficient. And this is because movies don't have time. Movies cannot immerse a lot of the time. At least movies cannot immerse as well as books. To fix the issue of narrative inefficiency in the name of the wind and wise man's fear is going to be the gold here. And that means they have to tell the whole story, maybe in one movie, maybe in two movies. I do not think that they, there is a need for three movies, but if they are narratively efficient, the movie will be good. However, you see, the reason why I say this is a problem is because in movies, if the movie is narratively inefficient, the critics will actually bomb the movie. The critics will bomb the movie and they will not give it a good score. I want the movie adaptation of the King Killer Chronicles to have a good score. I want it to also be critically acclaimed as a movie. And that to me is a very integral thing that I want to happen because I love it so much. Even though I have you know, issues with it, doesn't mean I hate it. I love it. I love it. And that is going to be very crucial. I want this to get good reviews. For it to get good reviews, you have to overcome the reality that this story is narratively inefficient. There's really no need to scream all day about this particular concept, right? So in other words, to put it in very simple terms, the movie will have to do things faster than the book does because it has way less time.
Simple as that. I have had my point. I hope that you enjoyed. Uh, and if you did, please consider subscribing. Have a nice day.